Hey, CCT gang, this is Kev here. I'm just coming to you live from home. I wanted to share something with you guys. Um, as you know, I use ZBrush quite a bit. And um, a while back, I had a couple projects. And one, for instance, I was looking for some snake skin and ways to do that. So I was looking for brushes, custom brushes. And a lot of you guys, if you're paying attention in ZBrush, um, there's a guy by the name of Michael Dunham. In fact, I think he's down there in um, North Carolina with Travis and Christy and those guys. But anyways, um, I came across over here on uh, gum, uh, gumroad.com, um, Michael's uh, stuff that he sells. And, and a while back, I had signed up for this lifetime membership. I got it super cheap. It, the most I think it was like 20 bucks he was running some kind of special and I thought well what the heck he had a bazillion brushes I think there's like right now close to a thousand brushes and the cool part is he has them all done by categories and I get updates probably two three times a month from him um, I just get an email that comes in and uh, I just simply download the, the uh, newest version and um, but as you know, having all these brushes and alphas and stuff, it can be a real pain trying to find stuff, and particularly even in ZBrush. Um, uh, I just don't like uh, how they arrange things. You can put things in the startup menu, but then it, it takes longer for the program to load, and it can create some other problems with ZBrush uh, that I've heard from a bunch of people. So, And there's a limitation of 300 brushes uh, inside the program itself. So. What do you do? Well, uh, Mike came up with this great thing called his, his uh, uh, brush uh, toolbox, and it's it's located here. When you scroll down at the very bottom here, there's an installation for it. Um, the cool part is he also has videos that will teach you how to make your own brushes. Uh, I'm not sure where it's at here. Uh, uh, this is probably because it's the front side. When you get on the back end, there's actually a link uh, to the um, to the actual little toolbox. So, anyways, since I'm a member, um, I signed up for this thing. So here's what it is. Let me pull it up here real quick. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this because we don't really need this right now. But yeah, we don't need this. Okay. So. Here's the cool thing. This little toolbox, it's in beta right now, and it floats here on top of whatever screen you have it running in. And so here I've got ZBrush running. Um, and this thing expands out. And as you expand out, this all these buttons here, um, you can actually create your own brushes inside of uh, this toolbox, which is really cool. Um, the other thing you can do is uh, you can type a title in here for, I don't know, um, start with D, anything with D will start to, it starts searching basically the, this database. Um, and what's nice is I have this saved on my D drive, not my C drive. And there's a set uh, or the brushes. I don't have one set for the alphas yet, but I do have one set for the brushes. And um, so it's on my D drive under a folder I have called Program Files and XMD Brushes. So let's just look at that real quick. So here is where I have that located. So here's on my D drive, Program Files, XMD Brushes. So inside here are all these, um, these brushes, and I have the alphas mixed in there right now. I'm going to separate all that. Uh, but anyways, so what's cool about that is this allows you to search through that, uh, all that stuff. But you know how it is. Out of all those brushes, all those different things, there's probably a couple things that you use a lot of. And, um, you know, I'm not a ZBrush artist, but, and you could just put common brushes that you want and store it in kind of inside a ZBrush. But sometimes I want to find something and, and I need an easy way to search for it. Instead of wasting time going out, I'd rather just update this and keep stuff in here, and then I can search inside of here. So um, that's how I got involved in all of this. And while you're in here, the cool part, too, is that so here, this little guy, 
this is all the brushes. And this little guy is where all your alphas will be kept. So right now, this just has the default alphas for ZBrush. And as I populate my folder, which I'm going to have to create a link for that, but um, once I populate my folder of alphas, and partly what got me thinking about this and sharing it was Travis's post on those those Japanese uh, alphas, which were kind of like really cool. So I was like, man, what if I capture a bunch of those and put them someplace? So I hadn't had time to play with this, and I decided to load it up and and mess around with it. And um, here it is. So. Um, I just thought maybe you guys would be interested in this, but over here you can create these little defaults. As you can see, under default, I've got these couple here starred, and you can go down here and add other ones, and then they show up over here. Um, the cool part is I had thrown this little CCT one in here. You can create another one and give it a nice, cool little color, but we'll just call this junk. <laughs> I don't know. I'm terrible at this video stuff. Um, you know, and give it a color, which is cool as well. Click OK, and boom, now you got another one. So you can search down through here and keep a grouping of something else. I mean, you could have something that's like orbs, cracks, and all kinds of stuff. You could have one that's, you know, the brushes that Tom that Tomas uses all the time. So you could call one Tomas as an example, or whatever you want to do. So I just think it's a, a kind of cool little way to keep things all together. And then you can just go through these. We can collapse this. That way it's out of my way when I'm actually working. And basically the way it works is you just, he's got a little script in the background that runs that you double click on this and boom, look, it resets your uh, your brush. And now we're kind of using that one. I guess I should need to divide this up a little bit. Um, anyways. Um, so well, let me grab that again. I'll set this to go on top so it always stays right there. So then you can just go like crazy and you know add another brush and it fires it up and loads it for you in the background. You don't have to mess around with it. And uh, you can go to town doing all the sculpting junk that you want to do. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully it's something that you guys might find useful. I think it is. Um, I do have a couple folders of stuff that I've that I've uh, downloaded that I'm going to move into my now default folders and use this little toolbox in order to find the stuff and have it running. Uh, one last thing, just to let you know, he does also make this a, uh, available so that you can load it onto a jump drive, uh, which is another really cool feature. That way you can just throw it on the jump drive, carry it with you. You don't have to have it loaded on multiple machines if you don't want to. Um, anyways, that's pretty much it. Kev out.